Sounds like almonds. Not good. Are we recording? Yes. DestinyComics.com proudly presents the following podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, starting from the left to the right, let's uh, introduce ourselves like we did last time. Hey, I'm Eileen. I'm Danielle. Michael. Brandon. Bonnie. Um, that was nice, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> we sounded like we liked each other. <laughs> oh, so my. That was that's for them, right? <laughs> we just cared so much. You guys are my best friends ever. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Don't tell Chrissy. <laughs> You need the energy. <laughs> I just drank this whole thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, like half of it because you drank <laughs> You also that was the water. my water. She's the one that offered it up. <laughs> so are we going to like draw questions from my hat or is one just going to ask a random question? Uh, well, well, last time I came preloaded with the Joker uh, query. Um... I, there's actually been um, some rumors running around. I actually read this the other day that the young boy in Iron Man three. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I, that I, he's that he is probably going to be revealed to have origins for Galaxy uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. The the kid's supposed to be Star Lord in Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy. Yeah. Did you, Danielle? Did you see Iron Man three? I did. Okay. Oh I did. yes, yeah, I did yeah. as well. Yeah. Woo! 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 Yeah. Seen it. Oh, good! I was actually <laughs> really bad. Yeah. Um, the, the kid, yeah, I don't know if it's it's an unofficial rumor, um, and I don't know how I feel about them making him Star Lord, especially because it Star Lord Guardians of the Galaxy is so weird because there's time travel, there's all this kind of stuff. Oh yeah, which is why I love it. Um, but it's like he's a full grown man as Star Lord. So, what would be the gain of making him the kid? Yeah, that's in my Iron question. Man three. Now, is that a a fan theory, or is that something that's been floating? around? Well, they haven't said if it's a fan theory or not. All they've said is that it's unofficial. It's flown around on a lot of blog sites. Yeah, no. because know? they because um, they said like that they because they said that the Guardians of the yeah. Galaxy was greenlit. Mm-hmm. Well, they're they already cast it. Yeah, they said it was greenlit and it's cast now. So that's one reason why. There's so much because Iron Man, the Iron Man movies have usually been reveals for a lot of stuff. Because in the first Iron Man, that's when they they announced that they would be doing an Avengers movie mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. at the in the in uh, the cutscene in the, the cutscene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one does not simply walk out of a Marvel movie. The <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it makes you second guess other films too. Uh, we I just, can't tell you this. I can't tell you the last time I walked out of a movie before the credits. Oh, I know. Oh, it's only the people in my group had already watched it and said there's nothing at the end of the credits. Otherwise, I stay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, of course, now that everyone has smartphones, you can just check online and see if there's anything course, in it before, the Iron, like while the credits. The are Iron Man three after scene cre- after credit scene was hilarious. Oh, was, oh my gosh, was so I was laughing so oh hard, my gosh. <laughs> and we'd missed the first about minute yeah. of the movie when we walked in. So I thought that we already knew who he was talking to. So in the credits, I'm telling mainly, okay, so so. Who was he talking to? Was that just he's talking because to the audience? Because I had seen it once. Like, I'd seen it once before she saw it. So yeah. she'd seen it already. And so yeah, I'm cause... asking her, and she's like, well, um, um, and then we, then her mom starts making fun of or pointing out interesting names in the credits, right? Mm-hmm. So then we go into that, and then there's the scene at the end. I was laughing so hard. I was like, oh my gosh, that was so <laughs> funny. And I totally just answered the question. It's been in the back of my mind this no. whole time. What was the last like... thing that you heard? <laughs> Uh, the elevator. You heard nothing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the elevator um, I'm a doctor, but I'm not that kind of doctor. You guys have a temperament for this. <laughs> that would make you laugh. The temperament laugh. I know. Oh, my gosh. And then he goes on another ramble. And, and it I just... Liked, mm, yeah. and just like, oh I liked at the beginning, whenever they actually showed Jensen there talking to him, the the scientist that he was in uh, in the cave with in the first movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because he says in the first I movie... Missed. That's yeah. what I missed. Because he says in the first movie... The guy's like, we actually met once before at a at a symposium in, in Prague. In Prague, yeah. he's like, he's like, and he's like, I I am amazed if I was that drunk, I don't think I could have ever given this speech. <laughs> and then, and then in the third movie, you see him. He's like, well, this is this is Ho Yinsen. And He goes, oh, actually, know somebody named Ho. <laughs> yeah. And then like later on, like they in Iron Man three, they have a throwback to that line, like where 
uh, he says, I saw your symposium today or whatever. He's like, I gave a speech? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know? Like, there was a little throwback to that line yeah. from number yeah. one. Like, I gave a speech? <laughs> yeah. um, I think my favorite line, though, in the third one, those two of them, one of my favorite lines is the one where he's like, you know what's going around through my head? Where's my sandwich? Um, <laughs> my favorite yeah, line was yeah. as the kids are like, I'm cold and you're, you're trying to manipulate me. You know how I know? Because we're connected! <laughs> <laughs> oh, he goes, oh, yeah, he goes, he goes, I'm cold. He goes, he goes, you mean you're trying to manipulate me? And he goes like this, he goes, he goes, but I'm cold. And he goes, I know you're cold. I know how I know you're cold. Because we're, we're connected. connected. Yeah. Yeah. It was the best. I loved it. Oh, that was, I thought that was like the one where he, um, uh, he's like, eh, God, Dad's leave. It's okay. There's no need to be a pussy about it. Yeah, <laughs> like, hey, Dad's leave. Don't be a pussy about it. And, and oh. the kid's like, oh. what? What? <laughs> what I loved was in this, when, when he's in the, in the lab. Everyone. Went, oh. <laughs> when he's in the lab and he's kicking in everyone's butts and. uh Points again at that one guy drops it. Oh, yeah. I don't know how to like working at this place. Everyone is weird. It's me. I love it. it. He, point, he points the just he points the, his repulsor at him and the gun. And the guy like drops his gun. He's like, 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 you know what? I don't even like working here. They're weird. I'm out of here. He just all right. Take off. He's like, oh, okay, that's all right. He wasn't gonna disagree. Movie's been out for five weeks now, so I guess it's okay to talk about the. The plot twist and stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. If you haven't seen the movie, shut us off. Go, go watch see it. it. Go and then because you're going to hear something you don't want to in three, two, one. The Mandarin. Yeah, the Mandarin. Um, <laughs> that threw me for a loop a little bit. Yeah. I was not expecting. At that first, I, I didn't like, like it, but then I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah, I was okay Angela with. Yeah, me. I was okay with <laughs> the the plot twist. And Iron Man three goes the furthest from the comics. It deviates yeah. the most from the comics. Yeah. It's such a good story. But it's probably yeah. the best of the films. It's really good. Um, and I've heard a lot of people like just nerd rage on the film mm-hmm. oh, because of the, what they did with the Mandarin. Oh, so many They people... weren't even happy that like with Ben Keasley's casting because the Mandarin has to be Asian. Well, you that's know? racist. You know, yeah. <laughs> and the thing is... I thought Ben Kingsley, you know, all the scenes they show him being the Mandarin, I'm like... Ooh. I think yeah. that's yeah. racist because he's hilarious. I, I mean, like this. No, it's just yeah. because as a culture we can accept Panda Express as being Chinese, and yet the Mandarin has to be Chinese. That is yeah. so whitewashed, though. Yeah. yeah. Well, but that's the thing is you got to respect Ben Kingsley for what he can do as an actor, and that's what it, really blew me away. We call it Panda he's Express an Chinese food, actor. and they have samurai pandas. <laughs> Come on. Like they don't even know what kind of food they're selling, but. Yeah. Um, they're 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 racially confused. But I just really admired his performance, yeah. like over everything. Because oh, when he yeah. when he switches from you know being this terrifying figure through you know a better part of the movie, and then all of a sudden you, you see him and he's like addicted. coming out of the bathroom, and you're like nobody should go in there for like an hour. <laughs> oh, you know, it's like that really threw me off. I quite heard. A bit. Here's the thing that I loved about it, and I when I was younger. I checked all the blogs. I wanted to know everything that was going on. I remember when Iron Man 1 came out, and there was a leaked photo of the Iron Man suit. Oh, like okay. someone snapped a cell phone picture. Mm-hmm. And it actually, the, the photo made it into Iron Man 3. And like one yeah, of the yeah. newspaper clippings is a. That's right, I it was remember this that. weird, blurry <laughs> photo of Iron Man. It's like I, I knew it from the, the leaked first, photo from Iron Man 1. The first photo from Iron Man 1 I saw. Was somebody took it on their camera phone, but it was like through a fence and trees. Yeah, it was like a fence. <laughs> and like he's like he's like this or something like, like I can't remember the pose. It's like his hands up, and like you just see leaves all around the picture. It's like you snuck in there, you little devil. <laughs> yeah, and, like, you know, we, I was so. But thankful. it looks awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, but I mean, like over the last couple of years, it's like I've gone from like, especially with Dark when they were doing Dark Knight Rises. Oh, I didn't want to know anything. I wanted to be surprised, and there was still like you'd glance at a photo on the internet, like "damn it, the yeah. bat wings in this film," or you know, yeah. not the bat. Yeah. yeah, it's just stuff you don't want to yeah, know. And Iron Man three not only mad managed to surprise me, but they threw scenes in the trailer to throw you off. There was a scene in one trailer. Where I swear to God, the Mandarin punched Iron Man. Yeah, I remember that. Like it was just like boom, you know. And you, they did these these scenes. Well, if you think about the Mandarin did punch Iron Man. Well, <laughs> and, you know, but I mean, like in, in the armor, like there was a scene, yeah. you know, with the the rings and stuff, and they they the the yeah, like they they just they were able to 
What if those really were Surprise. the rings of power, and they're just like they found him? Be like, oh, those look good on your character. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the one thing that I thought was he gets out of prison with the rings. He's like, I'm, I am the Mandarin now. <laughs> well, it's like the Mandarin. Um, a lot of people say he's Iron Man's. Like he's Iron Man's Joker. He's the most iconic Iron Man villain. Yeah. However, like in the comics, there was like twenty years where he hadn't even appeared. Yeah, he, he there was like, like dropped off the face. Yeah, of the dropped off the earth. Yeah. He's not like the most. Like the the problem with Iron Man, he's two face. Really, yeah is is all of his villains are like Hammer or like they're they're guys in suits. Really. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they're guys you know. that want his tech. They're they're most of them are industrial rivals. Yeah. So that's what makes sense. Because so Mandarin is notorious for a completely different. Reason. Yeah, he's notorious because his powers are also magical based. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, and the ten Mach One rings. Yeah, they're they're, they're magic powers. And so it's like, he's the one guy that Iron Man can't just, like, defuse. Yeah. And so it's the the whole mysticism versus Iron Man's tech. And so I was preparing for that, mm-hmm. the whole magic thing. And the, the Marvel movies universe has been so widely diversified with Thor <coughs> and even the uh, Cosmic Cube in Captain America, that was mm-hmm. so cool. Mm-hmm. That it's like okay, we can do magic based weapons. That right. it's not going to come off as corny. Yeah. I think that's what everyone so was expect, with expecting with with the Mandarin. Yeah. The hokey pokey um, stick. I <laughs> I did like. Um, Never did like that, that dance was, myself. <laughs> <laughs> I like that he was having um, issues with what had happened in New York. Well, because he was technically the only yes. normal person yeah. there. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, he was the only one. Well, yes, who, there was who, Hawkeye uh, and Black Widow, they, but they were but highly been, trained in like, combat hardened. Yeah, they've, they've been involved in things like that man. before. He's, exactly, he's a, a billionaire playboy philanthrop- philanthropist. I, I can tell. I remember that line. And I, <laughs> yeah. I'm always like, and, something about billionaire playboy, I can't remember the line. He's a, yeah. playboy, he's he's a, a billionaire playboy. He's a billionaire playboy. Armor, what are you? Playboy. Billionaire therap- playboy. Philanthrop- I can't say philanthropist in that sentence. Say refrigerator. Refrigerator. Don't think about it. Refrigerator. <laughs> um, but uh, I like that he was having a little bit of PTSD throughout. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, there's never really been a situation Plus, that he's been at that he can't kind of throw money at. Right. You know, in a lot of well, ways. Which made that one scene with him and the little boy really. I oh, yeah. That oh, scene yeah. Alone. I was just like, oh, my God. Like, like, you said really, you're a mechanic, right? So build something. Yeah. Build yeah. Something. It, yeah was it was really just, emotional. Yeah, and that's something good. that you don't see from I Tony Stark. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I thought well, was really great, was because you get a lot of emotion from him that you don't see in the other movies. Right. Because otherwise, he's just cool, calm, and collected. Mm-hmm. He's a badass kind of guy and just, you know, well, that's a really good match. And then, yeah. You know, and that's not who he is on the inside. So when he had his first confrontation with Pepper, it's like, where is this coming from? You know, all of a sudden he's so emotional and all he wants to do is try to protect her. Because I think... And then once it gets out of his control, he goes a little crazy. With with the yeah. with the scale of what happened in New York in the Avengers, I think it made him realize how mortal he was mm-hmm. and how close he can come to losing the things he wants to keep. Mm-hmm. And so that's one reason why he says that line. But also, if you look back at the first two films... He slowly integrates himself as because he says, I am Iron Man at the end of the first one. And then mm-hmm. also the second one, it's him as Iron Man, and he's trying to be... It's almost like he's Iron Man trying to be Tony Stark. Yeah, well, they did a little mm-hmm. bit of Armor Wars in... Well, they pulled for Armor Wars for 2 and 3, but they 2 got the closest to Hero in a Bottle. Yeah. With, um, that, was, that was the closest they came to talking about Tony Stark's alcoholism. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my favorite... Uh, oh, I see. Play a fat beat and I beat my friend's ass, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and that's... Iron Man, like, when I was reading Iron Man, that's the kind of Iron Man stuff that I, I was picking up. Like, I have in my collection the first appearance of War Machine in the comics. And it's completely different <laughs> than what they did in the films. Because Norman Osborn is the Iron Patriot. Well, yeah, he's the Iron Patriot. Well, yeah, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, but, but still... Like, that's with, a mess. With War, That's yeah, wrong. with War Machine, they um, they literally Iron Man was too drunk to operate the suit. Yeah, and Rhodey had to hop into the suit and play Iron Man with no like he couldn't yeah, no figure idea. out how to fly. He's literally running to the battle. Oh gosh, you know, like it's just. <laughs> and then the second one, he's like, he beats his ass, and he's like, "Bye, I'm flying." Yeah. So like, there by was the a- way, when you weren't around. 
I learned how to fly this whole time. I knew it all. That's why I just why like I totally broke ass. into your garage and yeah, familiarized so, with And you know, and Thermos likes me better. <laughs> yeah, the whole time is like uh, he's trying to save the world while Tony Stark's literally puking in the bathroom. Like that's you know what This is the greatest battle ever. <laughs> I I'm gonna get so late. Tony Stark's in the bathroom. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Oh nothing's worse than this and it cuts back to Iron Man. He's gonna rip my arm off yeah, and that's the one thing like Rhodey he never liked being War Machine because he was claustrophobic. Even though War Machine rocks. Yeah, War Machine rocks. Yeah, War Machine rocks. This thing, not a lot of people remember that. Rhodey has War Machine rocks 45, whatever it was. 65, I think it was. And all the people, they all start laughing, and then he just points the gun at them. And they're like, sorry. I know this is a little off topic, but still in the Iron Man vein. You know his... Machine dummy or whatever. Oh yeah. I want to his little his little bots. Yeah, his bot. I want to hit me. You, if you hit me I, with, the, uh, with the fire extinguisher again when I'm not on fire, I'm donating you to. A I city want <laughs> a I want a shirt that says I'm with dummy. Oh. <laughs> and I have a picture of the. Machine. Oh. oh my well, if you I, notice at the end of the third one, he carts them off when he yeah. goes back yeah. to the Malibu yeah. range of his Malibu house. He's got the two guys. Well, those, those that's where he got his start. He created those when he was a kid. Yeah. He's a little kid. He made them. <laughs> So they're like, they're like, quintessentially, those are part of Tony Stark. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Plus, you know, yeah, he has the the miniature arc reactor taken out of his chest now. Which, again, was in the uh, part of the original Iron Man run. Yes. So he's got that out now, that so. Though. I didn't think they would put it in this movie. I thought they would probably, like, do it in the next Avengers. Mm-hmm. But, the, the Woody, did you, uh, did you ever notice the necklace he gave Pepper? It was actually the shrapnel from his, by his heart. Yeah. I was like, it's so corny and beautiful. <laughs> So beautiful, well, it's like this, this it's one so thing, sweet and so strange at the same time. That's the one thing they didn't it's get like into. Still with, sharp. <laughs> yeah. Be careful. That's the one thing they didn't touch on in the films, and there probably just wasn't room, or, or it'd be a whole subplot. But he cheated on Pepper a couple of times in the comics. Yeah, he did. You know, like I he's not that. like. Tell you the truth, I'm surprised he didn't like go out and find somebody the moment he thought she was dead. Like he gets out, like sees her fall in the fire. He's like, you know, what, can we pause the fight? And I need to go have some like grief. Nookie, I'll be back. And, like, we can pick this up right where we get off. And you're like, he's almost out of the complex. And here's Pepper go. I'm alive. <laughs> yeah. Please come back. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, it just you know, Iron Man like before the films. Before the films, Iron Man was a B C character in the Marvel roster. Yeah, he was never. He wasn't. He, he was relegated to Nick Fury in a lot of places. Like yeah, he was, never had a big. Sa- he didn't really do big sales. They all. They. Well, he's hit the chopping block a lot. Yeah. He actually got canceled once or twice. Um, the first time he got canceled was back whenever he, his suit actually had the gnomes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I think that was the first time he got dropped. Somebody was trying to play with the design. I I, I like the nose aspect because. It made sense for me. Yeah. Well, now, in the modern days, now, with the movies and the way they have to mask design now for the movies, that's my Iron Man. I was like, okay, that's the suit that looks well, right. Cool. The, that the mask sense. has that, a bend in it, yeah. which doesn't read too well in a two-dimensional piece. Yeah. So, yeah, because in a, in, a, so in a comic book, it's like, that is straight flat. His nose is against him. <laughs> yeah. But so he's talking like this the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> you will also, <laughs> also, in the comics, Let's fight. Yeah, also in the comics, for years, um, no one knew Iron Man was Tony Stark. The, and then at the end of the first one, it's like, I am Iron Man. I was like, wait, he doesn't do that for a long time. Yeah, for a long time, Iron Man would be around, but he was this robot, supposedly built by Stark, who was Stark's cyberotic yeah, bodyguard. It was in his fact, bodyguard for a they time. pay homage to that in the first. Uh, yeah, he's like, they're like you, believe, you want us to believe that was a bodyguard in a suit, and then he gets quiet for a second. And he's like, the "Truth is, I am Iron Man." Yeah, like th- that was the Shield cover story they gave him at yeah. the end of the first one. Yeah, like really bodyguard. <laughs> you know, you know how I, um, real that. quick, go back to the. Well, if you think thing. about it, John Favreau was his driver and bodyguard, so it's like he doesn't fit in that suit. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Go back to the whole necklace thing. Thinking about it. You know how when they took the shrapnel out, it went think and magnetized to that thing. Yeah. Does she have to be careful anytime she goes to like the airport security metal detector. or something? She like a she's meat. Just, like, she gets choked when she's against the metal detector. Turn it off. Turn it off. Very romantic <laughs> idea, but at the same time, it's like very deadly. That kill you. Yeah. <laughs> well, like I get it. Your main for your yeah. main thing is like I'm gonna protect Pepper, and then you give her something that could potentially kill her. If she's around anything. And magnetic. She cuts her finger. You didn't do. These are still sharp. Uh, Jarvis, I knew we forgot one thing. 
Hmm. <coughs> I'll get right on that, sir. <laughs> All right, going back to Guardians of the Galaxy, what what Marvel films or even DC films are you guys looking forward to? I'm look. I am looking forward to Man of Steel. Man of Steel. Okay. I'm everybody I know. I I talk to they they actually don't like Superman. They they say he's a broken character. You know, he's because he's unkillable and everything. But I really enjoy Superman. He's one of my favorite DC heroes. He's great because honestly, it. Part of it is because he stands for truth, justice, and the American way. When Grant Morrison writes Superman, I've I've been brought to tears several times reading. Oh, Grant I've Morrison I've been brought Superman. to tears. I've been brought to tears. What are you reading? So, uh, a couple of his stories. Um, the one that really made me cry was, uh, oh, which one was it? Uh, oh, it was um, the Doomsday one, uh, the death of Superman. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I don't think Grant Morrison wrote that. No, one, no, no, no. That was before. Yeah, that was oh. before him. But I read that story and I I cried. Yeah. We went and we got the the special thing. I wore my my band to school. I was in junior high. It was had like, the S on it. <laughs> yeah, the black band with the, the S on it. Yeah, I wore it to school. Because the, the special edition, I did. Yeah, because there was two. When you bought Death of Superman, you, it came in two bags: a white bag or a black bag. I have like two or three white bag copies in my office, but the black bag came with a T shirt. That's what I got. Yep. And an RIP band. And the armband. Wow. Yep. I would have worn the armband. I would have been. I, I did. I wore the armband. Then, I would have like at first. Too I'd school. hide the. I would hide the S at first, and I'd be like, "Dude, what happened? What's wrong?" As I'm crying, and they're like, Are "You okay? Is it your grandma or something?" Just slide it over. Oh <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Super Aww>. man! <laughs> and like that was epic because they had the Superman symbol with like blood dripping oh, yeah. off of it. I remember like Gosh. like when as a kid like thinking, "Is this it?" Are they is they're done with Superman? They didn't put out a Superman comic for like two months or something. It was like they didn't, and they, three then or they four. put out the the, the yeah. four different like, the, 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 the four yeah. different titles because yeah. they yeah. they had like five Superman titles going on at the time. They all five stopped publishing, and then when they brought them back four months later, it was a different character for the the four titles. Yeah, Superboy, Regenerator, was, Steel, and then there's um, a Superman the cyborg. There was a Superman comic I got. I can't remember. Which one it was, but all I remember is that it was at the beginning of it. It's everybody's morning Superman. He has his big statue in the middle of Metropolis, and then it shows him being carried on like this throne by like these guys in robes. And I'm like, is he dead? And then I, I you see like like war and all kinds of stuff, like images of like afterlife and stuff. And then you see a bust bust open file, and you see the '90s Superman with the leather jacket. Uh, you see him walking away from this busted open uh, uh, vial chamber, and at the end, the tomb is busted open and he's gone. And I was like, "What just happened?" Uh, I <laughs> loved the '90s Superboy; I really did. He was neat. He was really neat. I, 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 I think I like him because he had a leather jacket. <laughs> the, the new Superboy leather jacket I, means he's cool. I'm reading the new Fifty Two right now. The new, but I have the first Teen Titans trade, so I'm going back. The new Superboy is okay. He's kind of edgy. But like, well, the Superboy they had before, he went insane, and that really pissed yeah. me off. The '90s Superboy um, was like pure '90s attitude. He had like the the one earring. He had the leather jacket. Yeah, I want to know how he got the freaking earring. The, the ear <laughs> how, how you pierce the ear uh, of Superboy? Um, Poisonous kryptonite needle, maybe. I used oh, to wow. read Superboy. Yeah. yeah, I used to read Superboy. It was one of my first ones, uh, and I have like a comic with him like flexing. And he's got, like, three women on each bicep. Nice. You know, like, it was just, like, he had this pure, but like, crying, ego. like, we want to go home. <laughs> I was yeah. like, that's very Gaston. I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They all, are they all blondes <laughs> and boosties? <laughs> <years? laughs> <laughs> he's got the little guy standing behind him. <laughs> <laughs> you got a little Superman? <laughs> you got a little boy? <laughs> Oh, by the way, by the way, that no, French like, girl you liked with the giant hairy beast, yeah, you gonna want to do something about that. <laughs> by the way, it's like, like the uh, Tony Stark. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, uh, I was gonna say, uh, the last Superman uh, that Grant Morrison wrote was, uh, was that? it was number eighteen, and it had a scene at the very end. It broke me to tears because it it jumped after the because it was Grant Morrison leaving the book. It was his last Superman for a while. So he it jumped, the last four or five pages jumps to the far-flung future. And it's like the Legion Super. The, the oh, the, super, oh the, Le- the Legion of Superheroes. Yeah, it's not them, but it's but their future. Yeah, thing. it's their future. And anytime they go into the museum, like there's this whole uh, wing of yeah, the there's, museum. There's, there's a wing, wing of a museum that's dedicated to nothing but Superman. Yeah, Superman. It's always been like that in the, fu- in that future, in the future they've depicted. Yeah, with the Legion um, yeah. and Booster Gold. 
And there's a there's scene. Gold. Yeah, there's a scene like like a, a school's going on a field trip through this museum, and this kid. Right. Yeah, this kid is just being a bully to this little kid. Yeah. And this other kid just walks into the Superman wing for half a second and just goes, this is bullshit, and punches the bully. Good. And it was just like, I br- it brought me to tears because it's like, that's what Superman does. He inspires. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Kid walks in, he's like, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, like, I don't that's... I gotta take this. Hold like, the on. Superman statue looked down at him, he's like, punch him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that he's like, you know what to do. Handle your business, son. <laughs> no, 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 it, it does. He's a like, black Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Steel was. Uh, <laughs> Steel was. I like Steel. That's true. I like Steel. Steel was cool, and then they made the Shaquille O'Neal movie, and I was like, no. They kind of oh. killed that character for a while. He's back yeah. in the fifty two. He's back. Yeah. Shaquille O'Neal wasn't horrible in that. It's, it's that, taken a long like, time no. to get over that whole thing. The the nineties comics superheroes. Yeah, they, they just. It was weird. Like, how can you tell? Think, how can you tell a Supergirl movie and a Steel movie without paying homage without or nothing mentioning Superman? Without yeah, Superman. Like, yeah. Superman is what spawned these characters. Yeah. yeah. So to to do a Steel movie without even mentioning Superman? Yeah. You, you know the thing though is weird. Is um the line I remember the most from that movie is the the, the girl who's in the wheelchair that's his friend that made the suit and everything. She's sitting there talking to the old black guy that they're friends with, and she, he's like, yeah, something happens, and he goes, well, dip me in shit, and cut me in breadcrumbs, and call me a cracker. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> that happened. <laughs> we all let that happen. Who's responsible for this writing now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we are all responsible that makes no for sense. this. That makes me want to slap everybody involved in that movie ever. Yeah. Right it's... down to the, like, the guy who brings the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> No, how could you let this happen? He falls over, and he's like, no, all the spit coffee. And he looks over at the director. I mean, all the coffee. <laughs> it was just, it was That's a, right, it's spit coffee, because it's all crap. <laughs> <laughs> and not the crap you're talking about. And he just yeah. leaves. <laughs> but the, oh, uh, the film I'm looking forward to the most that they're working on right now is Ant-Man. Mm, they are, are they working that. on Ant-Man? They are. Uh, they Will sh- it be in junction with a wasp? Um, I don't. I haven't seen anything with Wasp because the last I heard anything about the Ant Man and and the whole Wasp thing, um, this is along. This was a whenever they just got confirmed that uh, Iron Man was being made. Is that Ant Man and Wasp would actually have their own movies, mm. which made no sense to me. Yeah. Well, the, but then they came back and like they could be in the same movie. But now I don't know. Well, the, the I don't remember who's directing it, but he's more of a comedy director. And they showed oh, some test. No. Te- no, they showed some test footage. Um, no, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> the, they, they showed some test footage at Comic Con last year, and I've seen the test footage, and it made me want to see like an Ant Man film. Does he have the pin particles? Well, yeah, it, it, they're doing the pin particles, but they're going Sweet. closer off of the second in the Ant- second Ant Man. Oh, Ant Giant Man. Uh, you, well, the the second guy to be Ant Man. Oh, not Hank Pym. It's not him. Um, which yeah. is fine. Oh, what's that guy's name? I, I can't remember the character's name either. Yeah. But the whole idea of, like, a thief, you know, getting over his head, like, that story's pretty pretty good. Yeah. And there's a scene in the, the, the test footage of the show at Comic-Con with Ant-Man, like, literally he jumps and then shrinks down in midair and lands on the barrel of a gun, runs down the gun, punches a dude in the face. Because he still has the strength of a gun. Yeah, and, like, the guy goes flying... And then there's one thing I, I've never seen in any Ant-Man or Adam comic ever. It goes in the guy's mouth and grows. No. <laughs> um, oh but he grabs like, this guy's tie and he jumps over him and then grows and uses the tie as a fulcrum to throw this guy through a window. Nice! Oh, that's pretty cool. And it was just like, oh my god, like this is right this is, is action. You know? Right as the guy fly, gets ready to like fly in the air, he's like, this is going to hurt. You know? <laughs> It's Not good. Tiny guy throwing me over his shoulder. Wow. Oh, crash. Dang. <laughs> so it's like the Atom is... Slack. You know, I've never <laughs> liked the Atom... Or, I love the Atom. I've never liked Ant-Man. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm looking forward to, like, his movie. Like It's like, okay, they could actually make this character I think tough. it'll be neat. That's going to be really interesting to see how they pull it off, though, whether they're going to use it with... Um the filming with CGI and how they're going to... How it's going to transfer Ant-Man's an Avenger. 
Well, yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I had heard that he'll be in the second Avengers. Well, movie, here's but the he problem. Won't get his own film. Yeah, like he, I guess they might introduce him in Avengers two, mm-hmm. and then but because Ant Man slated for two. after mm-hmm. Avengers two. <laughs> um, well, Does anybody confirmed. know what the plot for Avengers two is going to be? Doesn't no, matter. It's it's gonna be awesome. we know we know <laughs> there's going to be the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, and we do mm-hmm. know that show. there's going it's going to end with a climactic battle. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but what's interesting is I don't know if Brian Singer and 20th Century Fox are being dicks or what's going on, but Josh Whedon makes his big announcement. We're going to have Quicksilver and um, Scarlet Witch in Avengers, and then all of a sudden, Brian Singer announces who's cast, who's going to be playing Quicksilver in Sony's X Men film, which is um, Days of Future Past. Days of Future huh. Past, which is weird because those characters aren't even in that series. And my um, question is, how are, they're saying it's going to work with the original three X Men movies? So my question is. How are you going to get Kitty Pride to go from the past to the future when she's already in the future? I don't know. Because in the original comic series, the reason why they get to the future and they they know what's going on in the future is because they send Kitty Pride from the seventies to modern day. Modern day. And because she was one of the original X Men. Well, then in this continuity, she's already in modern day. She's not part of the first class. No, no, she's not. So, like, we're gonna send you to the past, find out some shit, and come back. <laughs> I don't think it's, I don't think they'll use Kitty Pryde. I don't you. think so. Something will happen with Hank. Um, well, yeah, because in the current run, Beast is the one who did it, and everyone's yeah. like, "You're a dick." Um, <laughs> yeah, plus, I just want to see Kelsey Grammer as a big blue hairy guy. I liked Kelsey. Grammer <laughs> he was. He said stars and garters hard. right. That's all I cared about. Mm. Was he's like, "Oh my stars and garters," and I went in the movie. I went, "He's good." <laughs> <laughs> um. But like, uh, didn't care. He was good. Brian Singer's announced who's playing Quicksilver, Ooh. and I don't remember some French actor. Ah, damn it! But the, well, it's <laughs> fine by me. But the thing is, what about Scarlet Witch? They haven't said anything about Scarlet Witch. Okay. The weird thing is, is, she's Scottish. We might have a completely different actor play the same character in Avengers. I hope not, because the two franchises can't cross over because of uh, the different studios won't play nice together. Mm-hmm. Mostly really Marvel, messed stu- up. yeah. Mostly Marvel Studios wants their characters back. But, but what's really messed up is that they won't cross those over whenever the Avengers and the X Men have met a lot. Especially considering now Wolverine is on both teams. <laughs> yeah, well, Wolverine's been on both teams several times. But exactly. The thing, the thing is, well, they exist within the same universe, right? Yeah, they yeah. exist in the yeah, same so universe. Everything in DC exists in the same universe. Yeah. Or Marvel. Marvel. Um, <laughs> DC has two. Yeah, the band. Yeah, DC oh. has three different universes running yeah, right now. DC's mm-hmm. running three universes. That's what always confuses Marvel. me about DC. Well, is they've got the DC has three universes. So well, with the Fifty Two, it's have pretty a much lot more. They mm-hmm. did before they did the new Fifty Two. They had a lot of universes. Yeah, um, they well actually they had fifty two different alternate universes yep. before fifty two. That's too many. <laughs> um, there was one world I can't remember what Earth it was, but it was a steampunk world. Nice. That'd and be I awesome. loved it because they had a steampunk version of Batman. Orion still died. Yeah, I know. Shut up. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, they had this steampunk version of Batman. They did a couple stories called Gotham by Gaslight. Ooh. And instead of Robin being his sidekick, like you would automatically assume, in the steampunk universe. Blue Beetle was a sidekick. Oh my goodness! And it was awesome. it was Ted Cord. It was a Ted Cord. Blue it Beetle? was a Ted Cord Blue Beetle, and it was, there, it was really cool. Like I loved that. Like all, like it made sense. Like okay, why would we have Robin when we can have Blue Beetle? A cheery blue eyed boy. He's yeah. like he's like, <laughs> gee, Batman, let's go get criminals. When the Blue Beetle's is like, let's kill him. So, Bonnie, yeah. steampunk finally got your attention. People <laughs> <laughs> like, like so quiet over there. All of a sudden, I do. She didn't say much, and then all of a sudden, she's like, "What?" <laughs> steampunk. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, uh, I love it's punky steam. It's awesome. With, with, with the new Fifty Two, they've really consolidated their universe. Right yeah. now, you have the Fifty Two, you have Earth Two, which is one comic. Yeah. And then you have um, the Earth, Earth One. Line. Earth One Line, which they do a graphic novel like once every. The so Batman months. Earth One Line, I still want to read that. Yeah, which, uh, don't leave here without letting me give that. Yeah, to I you. still need it. Um, yeah. I heard the Bat, the Superman Earth One is really good. Yeah. I can't wait for the Wonder Woman to come out. That's what we I'm talked talking. a little bit about. Yeah, that. Grant Morrison. I love Grant Morrison. Oh, he's great. He's a crazy scout. Yeah. So, um, what movie are you looking forward I said to? Avengers Two. Avengers Two. Uh, yeah. That's yeah, a cop. I mean, no. So, well, okay, first of all, I'm I am um, 
Not online looking up all these things. You guys, I hear all my information from you guys, okay? I get my intel from you guys, so I don't really know what's coming out until you're like, hey, did you know this is coming out? That's the reason why she's only a guest on the podcast. Oh! <laughs> and um, lately all I've been uh, researching is steampunk, so, you know. Um, but anyway. Gee, why? <laughs> uh, I'll Let's tell you later. Um, <laughs> so anyway. Anyway. I like steampunk? Come on. No, I, like, I love steampunk. Anyway, so... Um, Sorry to interrupt this wonderful podcast, but we have to sell you at least a couple things. Isn't that right, Brandon? That's right. At DestinyComics.com, we have several books for you to choose from, ranging from a psychopathic teddy bear all the way to our famed 8-Bit Pulp series. Really? You guys put that out? I had no idea. I love that book. I'm going to go buy 12 copies. That's right. And your mother should buy 12 copies, too. Uh, but yeah, um, I have to say, the first Ow. Avengers movie was one of my favorite movies of the it last was five years. It was it was absolutely fantastic. I loved it. It was I love watching honestly, the I think it was probably the the best possible incarnation of that movie that it could have been. It was absolutely mm. fantastic. I, I, I don't know what you were. You know, Fox was like, we took away <laughs> Joss Whedon's TV show. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Like, why did we do this now? This They're going to want him. Mistake. They want him back so bad now. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I mean. Th- well, now that he's so great. But now, well, he's tied into the, into the S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah which that I, looks good. I saw the I wonder how they bring back Coulson. That's the one thing I'm oh, really interested in. You know, oh, you don't want to know. You don't want to know. Just because Fury's a big fat liar. No, they've leaked it online. You don't okay. want to know. I'm not going to. No, I mean, I want to know when I watch the show. Yeah. Okay. Don't <laughs> wanna know ahead I don't want to go online and be like, well, those dicks. Well, the thing is, there was a rumor floating around that I was really interested in. That they were going to use Coulson's brainwaves to do the Vision, and Coulson would have become the Vision in Avengers Two. That would have been an awesome idea. And I was like, "Oh yeah," because I look, Vision's my favorite Avenger. Vision's neat. Favorite. He's not my favorite, but he's neat. Yeah, I look, my my favorite or Hawkeye with the kilt. I'm sorry, I don't care. Oh you yeah, need, the you kilt. need the kilt. Got to have a kilt then. Yes. Um, <laughs> not yeah. traditionally wore. Yeah, he had a war <laughs> Not kilt. regimental. Yeah, no. <laughs> not for those leaps and jumps. That would have been that, that would have been, been an awkward, awkward scene watching him jump off the building. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah, he's just... Gingleberries! Oh Gingleberries! <laughs> Ten story building. Now you don't see his face. You're like, oh my god! No! <laughs> you just not see, not his face! You see those Chitari ships, you start like, whoops! <laughs> 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 you know he's coming, you know, down from a building when people yell, full moon! <laughs> yeah, so, like, I loved full Hawkeye moon. because of the attitude and the kilt. Hawkeye was cool. And then, uh, Vision was the coolest because, like, I first learned of the Avengers at the the, Ar- the Avengers arcade game. With, with Vision. The, yeah, Vision was the coolest because he was the one who could fly. Yeah. You know, Iron Man was playable in the game, but he couldn't fly. Mm. Vision was the only one who could fly, so I, yeah. um, I dug that. Yeah, Vision, I I think he's all right. I like him, but that would have been a neat idea of doing that with Coulson. My thing is, I think, like, of course, everybody jumps to that one thought of, uh, how, how's Coulson alive? It's like, Nick Fury's a liar. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. Lies he's a big a fat liar. liar. <laughs> he lies about everything. Rule number one, huh? Nick Fury lies. Yeah, <laughs> he stole the thing I was going to say. <laughs> And the doctor says something, he's like, stop lying, that's my job. He's Samuel L. Jackson again. Um, Mace Windu. <laughs> so, Danielle, what, what film are you looking forward to? Um, I'm in the same boat as Bonnie, mm. and being very excited about the next Avengers movie, even though I know next to nothing about it. I'm also excited that there's going to be another Thor movie, even though I haven't looked into what it's I want to know how many suits oh, Iron yeah, Man's like going to have when they do Iron 2, Iron, uh, when they do Avengers 2, because he did the clean slate thing and it destroyed all his suits. Yeah. Well, they're saying he might not even appear as Iron Man, he just might have a cameo as Tony Stark. That will make me honestly very upset. That would really like, that would the, really hurt my love of the He's uh, still, but he is saying I'm Iron Man. He has yeah. to be Iron well, Man. Well, here's the yeah. thing. His, uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s contract ended with Marvel Studios. And he won't sign a new one until everybody else that was in the first movie gets, gets a contract a raise. raise. Yeah. Which right. I think is Which really I think wonderful. Is awesome. That was cool. Yeah. I have a lot he's of like, respect for him. He's like, that. you paid me how much? And then you paid them how much? I don't think so. No, pay them more. Yeah, like he he got fifty million for Iron Man two, okay. Avengers, and Iron, Iron Man, Man three. three. That, that was he had a extreme. They got everybody else got a fraction of that. Yeah, he got a three movie uh, contract. Mm-hmm. Everybody else got a fraction, and he goes, "No, they should be getting as much as me." Well, that's the more. thing is, I think it's probably a valid argument to say that Iron Man is probably the most popular of all the Avengers. Well, just, no, yeah, just no. for obvious reasons. Well, if you think about Tony it, Stark is is. An interesting character. You well, think of, of Captain Jr. America is he's old Iron fashioned. Tony Stark now. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's their personalities well, are one and the same now. Well, that's the thing is you think about um, when you think about the past that Robert Downey Jr. had with his problems with drug and alcohol, and mm-hmm. being in prison, things like that. I was even joking. You know, the other day, it it 
it makes sense for him to play that kind of role. He understands Addiction. that mentality yeah. of an addict. That's why he's such a good Sherlock Holmes as well. Yeah. yeah. You know? I, like, I love that, Sherlock too. Holmes. That was yeah. fantastic. When yeah, they said he was Sherlock Holmes, is like, they got the addiction right, finally. <laughs> did they get into the... Mo- I, it's been a while since I've seen the films. Did they get into the... Mo- they only mentioned him... In, Not They only mentioned him using coca leaves, which is... Right. Still... So they only mentioned well, that. Well, he was injecting far. something in the first movie. You realize that yeah. that's meant for eye surgery. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they didn't actually say what it was. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Okay, that's what I was <laughs> no, it They mentioned that, for eye surgery. Yeah, they yeah. mentioned that he is an addict because Sherlock Holmes did, did enjoy drinking a little. Well, he was, he was, more, well, he was a morphine addict. No, he was a morphine addict. Yeah. I know that, but he did drink too. Um, if you watch the uh, um, Epic Rap Battles of History <laughs> uh, Season 2, they did a Batman... Versus Sherlock Holmes. Versus Sherlock Holmes. Batman, I don't remember that one. Batman like, has a line. Yeah. He's like, Isn't you're going to die alone with a needle in your arm. Yep. You know? I remember that. I think I, I remember missed that. Well, I've read all read, of them, but I I've didn't read remember Sherlock, that I've read, I read the Sherlock Holmes oh, novels, so yeah. yeah. Well, like, yeah. Sherlock Holmes is one of the inspirations for the pulp. Like, yeah. It, when we oh, think, Sherlock yeah, Holmes. when we think of pulp stories, we don't necessarily go to Sherlock Holmes. We go to Conan and some that. of the other stuff. But he was serialized, you know, just like the pulps. Yep. You know? But he was... But I, he's one of my favorite literary characters, and Absolutely. Robert Downey Jr. did a great job as him. He did fantastic, and he does a great job as Tony Stark. And pretty much, and Joss Whedon actually, when he thought of Tony Stark's personality, he thought of Robert Downey Jr.'s personality, and that's why they blended so well. Yeah. <laughs> um, they'll stop recording. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it's like I just thought uh, it was funny that you jumped at it at the same time. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> But Thank you for <laughs> joining me on that. Yeah. <laughs> Robert Engineer actually told said something the other day. He goes, he goes, you know, I can't do cocaine or drink alcohol anymore because if I came allergic, I, I, I'm allergic to it now. So he says, what? And he goes, yeah, every time I do it, I break out in a case of handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, at least he has a sense of humor. He does. Uh, yeah. Um, what, Maylene, what, what film are you looking forward to? Well... Um, actually, Wait, I know what it is. No, not Avengers. Nope, it's Thor 2. No. Oh my gosh! I'm actually, like, the more I, I hear about it, Ant-Man. Ant-Man? I'm yeah. gonna say it. I'm, I'm gonna... sticking with Man of Steel, though. The... Well, the, the... well, I'm, I'm kind I'm of looking for... feelings about Man of Steel. I, I don't like the yeah. color palette. Like, that's what I... Yeah, yeah it's really I'm not dark. crazy, but... I'm I not... understand that they're trying to make it really dark and gritty. But because to make that's not really world. something that Superman has been before. Well, they're trying to make and Batman has been that way, you know, for... Well, that's well, one reason least, why they did it. At least Christian Bale incarnation. Well, it, I've said it. But, the reason why they're doing it that way is well, because I know. they're putting it's, that universe. It's because that's, mm-hmm. and that's what's popular right now, something that's more dark and more gritty, and everything is getting that way. Well, more realistic, really. You know, but, well, but still, you think of Superman, and I think of, like, the bright outfit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. With yeah. the red boots and the cape and all of that stuff. And, you and, and he's so... You know, it's it's in the same universe, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Same world. Like, you know, I mean, his, his, um, his, stuff, <laughs> his stuff makes it, uh, his, um, yes. no. no, the, um, the, the costume, the uniform, whatever you want to call it, the makes costume. it look like it's made out of, like, basketball jersey material. That's what And that's kind of what bugs oh. me. I'm like, why is it perforated? Well, they're they're trying to do this thing where it's like they did the same thing with Superman Returns. They toughened up the suit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like they made the chest. They made the S stick up off the chest. <laughs> yeah, it's like, which I'm, was weird. Yeah, I'm sorry. I wanted to see you bend over and see the S go. Superman's <laughs> costume. <laughs> yeah, Superman's costume in Action Comics number one was based off of the body lifters, like the circus A lifters of, yeah. the, of the day. Um, that's not common practice nowadays, but. Still, so you can pay homage to it. I yeah, mean, you know, you know, don't change the whole thing. Like when he's going, like, do a mirror montage. Like he does the unitard with the with the painted on S, and he's like, two thirties. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love Superman. It's one of my favorite characters. Um, do you like Toy Story three? Kenny's bottle. Oh, <laughs> or or as I like, or as me and Kevin Smith like to call it, Schindler's toy box. <laughs> I had a reason why Ant Man was, um, oh. but you guys kept talking. Oh, we're sorry. sorry. Every time I'm so so sorry. Like, you guys are like, "Screw you! I'm talking. <laughs> Screw you, Elaine." So What's reason. your reason? I don't remember anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there was a reason. Uh, her fiance, almost husband, was looking forward to it. No, no. I'm just teasing you, For yeah. Brandon. <laughs> oh, 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 it, here's your Copernicus. Now we get you and your shirt back to the back of the line. <laughs> um, 
right, I want to talk about uh, Justice League Dark for a moment. Oh, yeah, I was following that for a while. Well, not just the comic, because that's the next yeah. big DC film that they're uh, doing. Guillermo del Toro's signing out to do it. Yeah, Guillermo del Toro, yeah, so Justice be. League Dark. That's going to be interesting. And here's the thing, John though. John Constantine, Dead Man, Satania, and uh, Swamp Thing, they're saying it's yeah. going to be with them. Well, they've, they've added characters... Since then. In the Justice League... Well, there's characters that are in the comics that they're replacing for the movie. So, like, they're doing... I remember! Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, <laughs> go ahead. I'll, I'll say it after he tells me. Well, we interrupted you. Right yeah, here. go back to him. <laughs> <laughs> well, because Brandon was telling me, I had never read any Ant-Man comics, and he was telling me about how there are two different kinds of personalities, depending on which comic you read, and one of them was, like, he would be his wife. And mm, I was yeah, like, I was oh my that. gosh, I've never, like... Since I don't read abuse. that many comics, really, I, I don't really know. I'm Ant Man. You know, like I've never heard of many superheroes doing that. Like I've heard of all the other things they've done. And when he told me that at first, I was like, "What? What? Let's beat this guy's butt!" You yeah. know, like, why couldn't he just do heroin like Steve? <laughs> yeah. Why couldn't he just be an alcoholic? Come on. Well, because they're supposed to be, you know, like protectors of the weak. Yeah. You don't yeah. see them as, so, as someone who's going to be like really abusive to someone that they're supposed to care about, right? Yeah. They're supposed to be abusive to themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's super like hero him hitting his. <laughs> so when I saw that, I'm like, like oh, oh my gosh. gosh, that's so. Yeah, that makes that image of him, you know, like flipping that guy over with his tie so much worse now. Yeah, because the inner monologue, uh, in the, 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 the the inner monologue bubble, as the guy's flipping over him, it's like after this, I'm beating my wife. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, so yeah, I never really got yeah, that line. I had no idea. Yeah, well, it, the like reason that. why I, I, I want to see that a little bit more than Superman is because I'm still trying to get into comics. She wants to see if they're going to have him beat his wife. No, I, I just don't want to be like, oh, what, what's your favorite superhero? Besides Batman and Superman, because for a long time, those are the ones I knew. You know, it's like, yeah, cool. I never read comics. So well, I'm like, the Blue Devil! <laughs> <laughs> I never even read anything. I just barely heard about the Blue Devil a little while ago. Um, I mean, I like Batman too, but I'm saying I want more Batman. than just. Well, it's like yeah. that. That's for a long time, I used, to say, I used to say Green Arrow. Yeah, I love Green Arrow. But that storyline with him being abusive, um, it, it, it lasted a long time in the comics because his wife's a superhero too. So, like, so she can take it, right? Well, <laughs> no, but no, the, the bruises and marks and stuff, like, oh, I was Thanos, fighting. like she goes to punch Thanos, he stops her like mid-punch, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Where'd you get that black guy? <laughs> you know, like it was, I didn't give it to you, so where did you get it? Yeah, so it you came in. You came in here to kick my butt with it. Who hit you? <laughs> it's like grabbing her by the hand like a teacher. <laughs> we got to report this. <laughs> yeah, so it was. It was like you know. And when Captain America, I think, was the one who found out, he literally put Ant Man through a wall. And he said, "If you ever touch your wife again, I'll break both your legs." I ain't going to lie; that'd be kind of a, a be one of my. I want to see Chris yeah, Evans that do that. Pretty, yeah. I want to see Chris Evans, like you said, yeah. because so far, Just through at the least wall. in for me, movie Captain America has not been great. Yeah, he's, he's not edgy. He's, he's not edgy. He's just a little bit of a wimp. And I get it, it's because he starts out as a skinny guy who just really wants to join the military. Which is really And then realizes Kobe. that he's way in over his head. Uh, but even so, like, even in the Avengers, it's, I find it hard to like him. Well, in, as a in the Avengers, I it's think him he's still gorgeous, dealing with that time shock. But, but yeah. I have a really hard time liking him. Well, well there was a deleted in Avengers, scene in Avengers that I think would have would have swayed what was that? you. But she watched without me, by the way. Uh, there's like a five minute scene with Captain America, and it's literally him going to this like coffee shop, and it's funny because he's walking past like a cell phone dealer, mm-hmm. and the guy's like, "Buy time, buy time," and Captain America's like, "Whatever," and you know, and he goes to this coffee shop to sit there and drink coffee, and he kind of flirts with this um, this uh, cafe, you know, barista, barista yeah. And she goes, you can stay here as long as you want. We got free Wi-Fi. And he looks at her kind of odd for a second, like, radio? <laughs> like, I mean, he's just, like, so out of his element. He's out of the yeah, right yeah. time. The whole yeah. movie, because at the end of the movie, you see him get some time shock, you know, whenever he comes out of the coma. Yeah. And that's what Avengers 2 is playing up, is that he is still dealing with living in a modern world. When he was in the 40s, like, he lived only, like, the last world he saw before he went, before he went into a coma it was a world at war. Yeah. And so seeing And I know that when he, when he comes now, out really and, and um, well, like, especially when he's talking about the cube and, I had a and uh, no, I know. who I was it? He was like, 
You know, I'm, I mean, and that is horrible. I understand that he's going through like a horrible pain, yeah. and you know, like literally the culture shock. You know, but I, I feel like I would like him a lot more if he got a little bit more screen time and was a little more fleshed out, especially in the Avengers. Yeah, because they kind of took really, back. I like, the only um, thing that I remember from sorry. from Captain America in the Avengers was the gymnastics that he did on the wing of the plane. Mm, yeah, you know, that's about it. Oh, well, I liked I liked the line where like, where he was like, oh, yeah. I got that. It was what they the quoted. Yeah. yeah, I got yeah. that. I got yeah. that one. Like, and he was, was so excited. He references. About it. He understood. You know, <laughs> I thought that was awesome. Yeah, he's like, oh, I got that. I got okay. that one. Does anybody know? Okay, I. We all know that man over there is playing Galica. We <laughs> <laughs> thought we didn't know. How did he turn? That must be exhausting. I recently learned a fun fact actually about Robert Downey Jr. when they were on set of the Avengers. Um, when when he's. Randomly, well, yeah, it wasn't ad lib, but like um, that scene when he's talking to Banner mm-hmm. in the office and he's eating blueberries, yeah. he was randomly planting food around the sets that he could randomly eat and sneak it in. <laughs> and I thought that was, was. the funniest That's thing. Well, that was his own food, and he like yeah. gives him like, a treat, like he got stuff. right. And, like, and, and, have a and I was so <laughs> impressed with. Um, uh, what's his name? Josh Whedon? Uh, no, no, no um, with the guy who played John Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo. And I love him. I think he was he's a good fantastic. Oh, yeah. I, I like him as Bruce Banner. I think oh, he's, I he's the, the best incarnation of Bruce Banner. There. I thought so, Edward Norton was really good, but no, he, he, came on, he, he came off as whiny to me. Yeah. Well, Mark, well, well, that's the that thing. Is the Mark Ruffalo, you know, he's got the... He's got the look where he's got something under the surface that he can't, you know, like, quite get a grasp on. And he gets so, like... So genuinely upset that he becomes this green rage monster. <laughs> you know, fan it. of that, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I'm officially a big fan of how you turn into a giant green rage monster. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. Um, but I was going to say, going back to Avengers Dark, um, they're swapping Justice out. Justice uh, Dark. Yeah, Justice League Dark. They're swapping out a couple of characters for the Demon. Oh. And Swamp Thing, and instead of they better have Dead Man. Yeah, Dead Man's in there, but instead of Zatura. <laughs> Being the one who brings them all together, what? It's Constantine who brings them together. That makes no. Oh, fuck John! Ah, Constant, <laughs> no, yeah. Keanu Reeves. Yeah, uh, Constantine. <laughs> he is, dyes his hair blonde for the movie. <laughs> well, whoa! Like we gotta defeat monsters. They you're, are, made, you're made of bugs. They <laughs> are bringing back Constantine, Constantine back to the comics, mm-hmm. though. You've got too much emotion for Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're not. I think you're really Keanu Reeves. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, uh, they're bringing. Have you read Keanu Reeves' backstory though? <laughs> but, oh uh, wait, yes I have. Oh my gosh, yeah, I just heard about life, that recently. His life, like, he's such a big freaking like philanthropist. He doesn't keep hardly any of his own money. He just like, he lives gives it away. in a he lives in a two bedroom apartment. If you go ask him for money, he will give you money if it's a worthy enough cost. Really? You meet Keanu Reeves on the street when he's just like sitting up at the bus stop, staring at his sandwich and thinking this sucks. Like, <laughs> like he'll like, of course I'm like, thinking sad Keanu. Mean, this sandwich really sucks. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> Okay. Funny, but, this looks like a good wait, sandwich. What kind <laughs> of sandwich is it? Mm-hmm. I don't. It's just some kind of like white bread sandwich. Like it's like he's sitting like this, and he's got his knees kind of apart, and he's got the sandwich in his hand. And he's just looking really, really sad. Um, <laughs> it's all over the internet, and it was all he's, over the internet. He's like, like I don't need this ago. sandwich. Why I don't need do this I have sandwich. this sandwich? People are suffering, and it's like ah. Oh. Um, but he's like on movie sets and stuff, just giving money away to so, like people who are working in the crew or extras. They tell him his story, and they're he's just like, here, take my money, take. All of it, as much as you need. He All doesn't live in know. any big place. He's, he's Keanu like, Reeves, he lives in I really need rent money. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's you know, dad. and he, he covers just enough for his living expenses yeah. and everything else. He just gives it away. Well, hopefully, he's still getting royalties so, from Matrix and stuff. That was. That oh, wouldn't yeah. surprise me if he still um, does. Over you know. 90 percent of his profit from the from the second Matrix movie, he gave to charity. Oh, cool. He's just one of those ninety percent of what ninety really percent of what he made. Big time good guys, and it's incredible. And it makes me sad that he's not a better actor. Right before he got Bill, and, right before he got to Bill and Ted, he did Bill and Ted. His fiance died. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh. she died, and then and his it was sister died. Tragic. Yeah, and then like too. it was cancer, wasn't it? And then his sister and then died. His sister died in a car. Accident? In a car accident, and then his dad, his whole life was uh, in and out of rehab for alcohol. Mm-hmm. So and just like struggling to make it by, and then mm-hmm. you know, just oh my gosh. This so in like one of those things that hits you. One quote that that they actually posted that he said he's like he was like you, you gotta have happiness for them. he goes maybe you do but I don't I just live. Mm. Gosh, that's bleak. Man, mm. I was like I was like I was like you could be Spike Spiegel now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I liked his take on I liked the film that they did of Constantine. 
It was interesting. I it was the closest we were going to get to the comics. Yeah. I still wish, like, Daniel Craig would have been a better Constantine, because Constantine in the comics, blonde British. You know? <laughs> it's James Bond <laughs> fighting demons. Yeah. See him several years later in Skyfall. I know James Bond. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, but, like, I mean... Whatever. You know, the, it's got that He's British attitude, you know, from Alan Moore. Yeah. Um, which Constantine, this is what throws me for the loop, and I probably, they probably won't even do it in the film, but Constantine first appeared as a Swamp Thing villain. Mm-hmm. And Try to kill Swamp Thing. He, he was, like, Swamp Thing, if you're unfamiliar, is this chemical creation, you know, there was a movie years ago. Um, then you worm- find out it's not him, it's a, it's Worms. Yeah, he's, he's worms. Wait, who has worms? <laughs> no, he is worms. worms. He is oh, worms, yeah. yeah. Um, and Wait, he so drugs he's like his girlfriend with tubers. without the sack. <laughs> <laughs> he is the sack. <laughs> he is the sack. Um, but Swamp Thing... And he drugs his girlfriend with tubers. He does. Um, Wait, I've heard this. Like Why did I hear this before? There's nothing like a sad Well, that's one of the things like... <laughs> like a tuber, like, you know, the root, a tuber root. Yeah. He, he gives well, like it... Like Katniss. Like, like, he grows out of his body and yeah, gives it to his girlfriend. He gives it to his girlfriend, she eats it, and she, goes, and she goes on the psychedelic trip where they actually mi- uh, meld minds, and he turns into his old self in her mind. And they're able and, to... And that's uh, how they get freaky. Fornicate. He takes it. Oh, that's just wrong. Okay, that's Okay, good. that's Here. going into territory anyway, I don't want to think about right now. They are literally part of each other. The way it happens, I love how you take all that and you say fornicate. Like, you make some class here. Like, <laughs> like, all this horrible, gross stuff, and he's like, and then they fornicate. <laughs> well, that's like that swamp thing. Well, high school science. He's made out of worms and feeds her things that come off of their body, and then, boop a doop <laughs> the fact that you yeah. say it that yes. way um, That's what it is Boop-a-doop <laughs> But in the uh, Constantine's first Didn't appearance Don't worry, Peter That's why they call it a <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that um, But Constantine's first appearance He comes after Swamp Thing With holy water and silver bullets Because he thinks he's a demon He thinks he's a demon And None Swamp Thing's just like, what the hell are you doing? You should like, come after him with pesticides. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see now John Constantine's like or jumping salt. around him. Know, right? <laughs> like the little well, dog in the Wolf cartoon. Yeah, but it would affect worms too. <laughs> like, Swamp Thing's just staying there, and then you just see like John Constantine jumping around him, like the little water. dog jumping around the big dog in the old Looney Tunes cartoon. <laughs> like, but he's throwing holy water and shooting him, and he's like, he's like be gone, be gone, bang, bang, be gone, be gone, bang, bang. Swamp Thing's just like, grabs him by the head, and he's just like, stop. <laughs> it literally sounds like a dimension Mickey Mouse. <laughs> now I got the same with Mickey Mouse. He just, needs to, he just needs to pour some rain on him and then let the sun come out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's it. <laughs> well, well, make sure right. he's on the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah, come out. Just well, make sure he's like in the middle of the road. He can't move that. Just fast. find the giant bird. We'll be well, good. Well, it's, it's more like the oh my gosh, that makes me. He's actually made of like trees and stuff. Like. It's the. It's uh, just uh, that I he was made out of worms. No, what happened? It, it's the <laughs> worm DNA. It's the worm weird. DNA actually changes, and so it's worm his... DNA, but he's actually a tree. Yes. Check this out. He's just weird. I That's forget who bad. explained okay. it, but this Alan is actually. Moore. So, this is, yeah, it was Alan Moore. Alan Moore anatomy lesson. Is he explained it? Like, I this is technically no supposed to be possible. <laughs> it's because there is a real worm out there that when it eats something. It gains the genetic, it gains the DNA and genetic code of that, and it can actually shift into almost that. So whenever he gets blown, whenever the guy gets blown up and sent into the swamp, his body got eaten by these worms, and these worms are like, oh well, this is the lungs, this, and it makes these things, but it pretty much makes it out of the plant matter that they have ingested, and so he pretty much becomes a plant rendition of himself. Like, there's a great line from Alan Moore, it says... It's weird. It's just I, <laughs> yeah, there's a great like, line. I get like, it. I like, guess Alan when he made this character. It's yeah. Alan... Well, he didn't make the character. That's the Whoever thing. Whoever made the he character or tried it. to explain Well, when the, the character was originally created, it was him with... It was a mutation. It was a mutation. It was his body with mutation, because there was a chemical involved also in the explosion. And it was his body with and the plant foliage or anything mutated from him as the chemical and the swamp water mixed. Mm-hmm. Then later like on, he'd just be she's like, no, you're the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like somebody learned about these worms and was just like, sure, we can make something out of that, I think. Alan well, Moore jumped up and down. It. If we could do it, we could do it. <laughs> Alan Moore is so weird. Do I... the Mickey Mouse voice, though. <laughs> we can do it, we can do it. We can do it, we can do it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! 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 I actually used to, when I first got into comics, I was a big Alan Moore fan, but 
Uh, he's just so crazy. As of the last couple of years, like I can't stand him. I really can't. No, I, I was a big Alan Moore fan, but he's just no, so insane. No, wait a second. Alan Moore did what else? He did From Hell, V for Vendetta, League of Extraordinary okay. Gentlemen. That's where I know him from. I read V for Vendetta and I loved it. Mm. I thought it was fantastic. His big one, honestly, is. I really hated the movie, though. Yeah. I like the book and like the book she hated and like me. Because because the book is, you know, a solid graphic novel. And there's there's so many more dimensions to it, though, because you don't hear about Sutler being in love with Madame Liberty or anything else. And the fact that he is so. Also, in the book, they explain how V sees without eyes. Yeah. In the book they explain yeah. that. In the movie they don't. They're just like, there's no eyes, but he sees us. Yeah. It's, I, I actually no, just watched that last night and I no thought eyes. about that and I was like There were no eyes. But, but I know he was looking at me. at me because I felt it and I'm like uh, uh? And I You probably think dead people are looking at you too. And I <laughs> I see dead people. <laughs> and I them. didn't like how in the movie they didn't explain how the explosion happened. Mm. Because he had been messing with fertilizer in his room. <laughs> yep. And oh, he's just he's like, boom, it happened. Okay. You know? a, well, yeah. V is a terrorist. Straight up, he's the 100% anti hero. Um, yeah. You know. You know, Alan Moore wrote him as a terrorist. But and his I line. I loved it. But I thought his it was one fantastic. line has become like the outcry of this nation, which is weird. Is like, you know, government, sh- uh, people shouldn't be afraid of the government. Government, government should, should be afraid, afraid of, of the people. people. Yeah. And that's like become the biggest outcry in the last few years. It's like, mm. truth, justice. The guy in the mask. <laughs> no, it's like barely even a Mary Wayne. It's just like that guy in the mask said something else. Awesome. Now, if you look at every protest you see on TV now, mm-hmm. there's one guy wearing that mask. Well, well, yeah, and well, there's always okay been somebody. And it's always been, and it's, mask. And it's yeah. like you're a douchebag. Like <laughs> well, mainly, do you nothing. even understand the symbolism behind this mask? And every time I see meant? that mask, I'm like, we don't have a parliament. <laughs> what are you gonna blow up? <laughs> and here's the funny thing about that mask that Alan Moore pointed out in an interview I watched. He's like. The mask represents, like, anarchists and stuff like that. He goes, but 20th century is a million-dollar corporation who's making money from selling the masks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah. like... Well, that's the thing, is the year that the movie came out, how many V's did you see at Halloween? Seriously. Oh my God. I mean, oh. Oh my, God. my brother went as V that year. I got Hadn't a V mask, but I didn't use it as a V mask. I, I And just thought it looked cool. And oh, I was okay. like, how many other that's people not- have, have seen the movie and can't appreciate... I went to go to see the movie with my dad. I, I because think- I had bought... The soundtrack, and I had bought the book, even though I sat in Barnes Noble and read it. I still listen to that soundtrack. I love that. It's a good soundtrack. But the entire time during the movie... 1812 The entire time during the movie, I'm like, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Where's this? Where's this? It's not a Violet Carson. Or it's not a Scarlet Carson. It's a Violet Carson. What are they doing? They're messing everything up. And I realized it's hard to find purple roses, but, you know, and yeah. (laughs) My dad was like, why are you complaining? And I'm like, because I just read this and it's wrong. (laughs) I want, his, I want his mask from. The, I want the mask from the movie because it was like a, a like a ceramic porcelain mask. One. Yeah, it's not like yeah. those cheapy plastic. Yeah, ones. I want that one. But at the same time, I get worried that like if I get punched in the face, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna feel like That's going home. Hurt. Mom, well, you I need eyes, you to, so you'll have to figure pluck out to these pieces out of my face. <laughs> Well, uh, it's uh, pretty much Sydney? time to wrap this up. Well, uh, I had a thought. I said, oh. I think. And then it oh, was sorry. Again. And so there's just this random I think floating around there. <laughs> and people are like, what does she think? She is! She is! She thinks, therefore she is. Mm. There you right, go. So explain your think. I think that, going back to your brother you know, wearing the mask, and like, if you've never seen the movie, don't wear the costume. Yeah. Or if you have any book. movie or any yeah. costume. No, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, any movie. Yeah. Like, or if you haven't read the book. Don't go as a character. Well, how I many saw... people do you see at Comic Con who are all dressed up like as anime characters? Oh. I don't even know who they are. Well, if you're dressing up like so an an, if you're dressed up like an anime character, chances are you know who that character is. There's been people that are like because nope. I have. Just last year, I had a friend who went, and people were you know, um, my friend Natalie. I don't remember who it was who she pointed out, but there were like several people. Yeah, and she was like, "Oh my god, you love that manga too!" And they're like. I just found this costume online. I really like it. Oh, they bought I'm the like, costume. Ah, yeah. Like the hardcore yeah. cosplayers well, who well, like build people their own. Who make you can their tell. Costumes, people, you can tell who yeah. makes like, I know the bought costumes. Out, yeah. I know people out in Highland mm-hmm. that they they make their costumes. Yeah. That's what I would like, do I if to, I were to go to Comic Con. Around Anime but Expo time, fun. I get so many Facebook updates where they're like, just got done dyeing the wig. Now time to style it. I'm like, so oh then, my gosh. Yeah, All right, yeah. well, it is about time. Yeah, um, yeah. let's end this with uh, what we're all reading, like we did last time. All right. Mm-hmm. We'll start with Bonnie. 
Uh, what if you're I'm not reading? reading comics, you can say books. Yeah. If you're right. Oh, um, actually, I'm uh, decided to read some Jane Austen. I just finished Pride and Prejudice and started Sense and Sensibility. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> I'm going to give you a proper English Sense and Sensibility is good. There we go. No, golf clap. Golf clap. Well, cause, because I've seen all the movies, but I hadn't read I like Sense and Sensibility, her, so though. Yeah. I have them in did, my Kindle. I decided to read did she write? Did she write the, the Importance of Being Earnest? No. no. Who wrote that? Um, <laughs> all, all the women are like, no. no. Uh, I don't remember who it is. The no. guy. Yeah, but I just no, because I like I like all her stuff, but I just the, that one just popped in my head, and I can't. I've no, read it and I've watched well, the movie. Wasn't it it's generally the same Firth. type? Of movie. Was it a Man, play I, originally? Yeah, it is originally yeah. a play. Because yeah. yeah. I read it's it, funny I read it, and I saw the movie with Colin Firth, and I just thought it was. I saw the movie, but I didn't see the play. So I saw the play with Shockwell years and years ago. All right, so Brandon, what are you reading? Um, I'm actually reading a book this time. I started reading the Divine Comedy Dante's Inferno. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Yeah. I, oh, more sinister. Dun, dun, dun. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm reading that. Uh, I've decided that once I finish Dante, I'm going to go back and actually read the Bible cover to cover. Oh, cool. Some I've never done. And so I figure if I can get through Dante, I can. I'm, I'm feeling I can get through. <laughs> You're all there you go. Um, <laughs> it looks like his training. <laughs> yeah, as a, as a comic, he's reading yeah. Dante. <laughs> it's the eye of the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> he's just sitting there reading it. I have the tiger re- playing in the background. <laughs> um, Dean Winchester <laughs> jumping around, scratching his arm, singing it. You'll just see me come in, break the stereo. You've been listening to that for four days. <laughs> Shut it off. But the book's not done. Um, I don't care. But as far as comics go, I have a huge back pile of books I'm trying to get through right now. I'm reading uh, the first uh, Teen Titans trade, and then I'm reading uh, Jonah Hex because I'm trying to figure out what's going on with Booster Gold. Yeah, Booster Gold ended up in the Old West. No. kind of want to read that now, too. Um, <laughs> that's it. Um, you. Sorry. I'm actually reading, in the, in the novel department, I'm reading the... Omnibus for the for books four, five, and six of the Black Company by Glenn Cook. Mm. You can blame your boyfriend for me liking those. No, well, Actually, when we were little kids, <laughs> he's like, "Dude, read these books." And at first, I was like, "No," and then I started reading them. I was like, "Holy crap, these are awesome!" <laughs> and then I told him I got the omnibus. He goes, "You suck." <laughs> and then comics, I'm I actually haven't picked up anything new uh, for this month, but I'm actually reading. The, the, all the que- the issues of the question that I got on Comic by the Pound Day. Oh yeah, back back issue questions. Yeah, so I bought I got a lot Steve of the uh, Dicko. the uh, those were they're the early they're the late eighties early nineties issues. Yeah, angry Steve Dicko. Oh he was oh you can tell how angry he was in these issues. He has a really like the first guy you meet in issue one that is the questions villain is a really really creepy priest. I can't remember the guy's name, but I'm just I'm just like you touch boys. <laughs> it was yeah. horrible. <laughs> It would like he gives that vibe in that book, and he gives that vibe. So I'm just like, I really wanted to punch you in the face, really, really hard. Well, Steve Ditko, uh, some of those here don't know, he co-created Spider-Man with Stan Lee. He's the guy who actually drew Spider-Man. Oh, that's right, I remember. That. And he Spider-Man. got really angry yeah. with Stan Lee to the point where he, he walked out of his contract. <laughs> like, really. Like literally, he he walked out on Marvel. He walked out on his contract with them. He's, He's that's make, right. I've heard that. He literally walked in, dropped off his boards because back then the artists would come in once a week, once a month, drop off their boards to be scanned, or you know, and then they be. Yeah, and then he just never. He walked out. Never talked to him again. Never talked to Stanley. Never. Um, after wow. fifty years, they managed because it literally was Spider Man's fiftieth anniversary. They managed to get him to draw one cover of Spider Man. Wow. And it was a limited print, and each Stan, uh, Steve Ditko cover uh, sold for 500 yeah, I'm, I'm um, wow. How do people not like Stan? How, how come people get mad at Stan Lee? He's such a lovable guy. He is, but he's also a bad businessman, and a lot of artists felt they got screwed over by him. Well, plus, you know, the, the Stan Lee company he started, that went under in a year. Well, that was... I don't know how Stan Lee did, avoided litigation with that, but that's a whole other story. Wow. Well. It's Stanley. He walked in the courthouse and he's like, he's like, come I'm on, true believers. He's, he's like, come on, true believers. I'm Stanley. And the judge is like, dismiss. <laughs> dismiss. <laughs> well, uh, what are you reading? What okay. You um, so right now I'm actually reading one of the books that I let you borrow that you have not returned, and I'm assuming you haven't read. Um, well, actually, I'm halfway through, and I had to put it. Down. Okay. So since it's on my Kindle, I'm reading The Child Thief by Brom. I had to put that down. Um, it's. Is it Since a, you're the only one who's ever heard of it, it's a very, very dark kind of retelling of Peter Pan. 
Is it a, a newer story? Because you no. said Brom. I'm thinking Brom Stoker. Or? No, Brom. That's Brom. all he Just goes by. Brom. I don't know who this guy is. Like Madonna? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Um, like Cher. Um, He's a kid from getting his tongue branded. <laughs> oh, I can't get past that. Uh, I'm not at that part yet, and it's been so long since I've read it. Shut up. Tongue branding! Ah! Um, as long as there are no bullet holes. Mm, there's plenty of bullet holes. Um, shut up, Mike. You let her talk no, about No, with the bullet genes. hole. Oh, let me, well, let me talk about my book. Go ahead. Um, I'm sorry. I forgot what I was trying to say about it. It's Wrong. just, um... I, this guy's written a bunch of different stuff, and what's really cool about this one is he's, um, in, like, every other chapter, there's, um, an illustration that correlates with the chapter, and they're all really detailed and really kind of dark, and, it's, like, they're gorgeous. I love them. Um, I'm really glad that they actually translate to my Kindle, because it's the very first one. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of those don't translate very right. well, but right. it's a long book, and I'm about maybe a quarter of the way through it. Mm-hmm. So... Um, I'm going to go with the flow here and say I'm also reading a novel. <laughs> I'm reading a book called The Spanish Bride. It's actually really good. Um, and <laughs> giving me a look, Mike. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to know what it's about. What, what is, <laughs> tell me more. <laughs> this is tell me more, face. Tell me more. Mm. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to have that song stuck in my head and I hate you for it. No, my, my what the hell is that face is that same face, but with my eyebrow cock. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it's a book about, um, Catherine, uh, who marries, uh, you know, Henry the Eighth. Oh, his Catherine wife. of Aragon. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about it's a, it's a historical fiction, uh. so it's not, you know, it's all about. Uh, it goes back and forth between the time she gets first gets to England and she was betrothed to his brother, oh. all the way to, to the time when the divorce and Henry's trying to get a divorce from her to be with the Bullen and Bullen. And, Bullen. and um, so it goes back and forth between the two times, and you know the time that after. You know, her first husband's death to kind of the courtship between her and Henry kind of thing. And um, it's actually a really good book. And, you know, it, it's, it talks a lot about one of her handmaids. Who's who, it by? Um, oh, I don't have it around here. But it's... I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. Because I was like, yeah. I can't remember... The, that's like one of my favorite yeah, topics. I've read, read some, of, so read like, some oh. of the books from I'll Let You Know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> author, right? So she's like, it's... I'll let you know. And I'm like, I've Actually, read a couple of those books. Actually, I know that. Know if you give me a few minutes or after the cat, podcast, I'll show it to you. Yeah, yeah. Please. But it's a really good book. And, you know, I, I think, you know... Like, I guess the same author, the guy who wrote it, also wrote, uh, like, another book uh, about Anne Boleyn. Uh-huh. And, you know, it's another historical fiction kind of thing, you know, where I haven't read it yet, and I haven't been able to find it in bookstores yet, but mm-hmm. it's a really good book, and fairly easy to get through, you know, so it's... Well, it's, if you like Tudor Court, you should definitely read Philippa Gregory. Really? Mm-hmm. All of her stuff about Tudor Court is fantastic. Mm. Yeah. And she writes a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. So, alrighty then. Alrighty. Uh, that goodbye. So yeah, long right. for Goodbye! Well. You're on the table. Uh, <laughs> right, you've been listening to At the Table... You've heard it from the table. Have a good night. Listen to a Destiny Comics podcast recorded in Hemet, California. Show produced by Michael Sanders. A special thanks to any and all guests on this show. Sorry to interrupt this amazing podcast from DestinyComics.com, but we at Destiny Comics have a message for you. Buy our stuff. It'll make you happy. That's right. Buy our stuff. It will make you happy. I'm sorry. I totally like no else to say. <laughs> Damn it.